has Russian President Vladimir Putin finally gone too far even for Russians? I mean, killing his critics has been at it for ages, actually, warning this is distressing, and it should be. Putin has had many journalists shot under his watch, or maybe they're just unlucky. Rival politicians also shot dead as well, like uh, Boris Nemtsov. Uh, Putin has without doubt also had political dissidents like uh, Itvinenko poisoned while business critics fall mysteriously out of windows of tall buildings, so many of them. And the plane of military leader Yevgeny Prigozhin was last year blown out of the sky by a bomb quite deliberately after he challenged Putin once too often. And Putin has so far got away with it all. But the death now of Alexei Navalny. I wonder, has Putin crossed the red line? I think I was probably hoping more than expecting. Navalny was the Russian opposition leader who Putin's agents first poisoned. Poisoned his underpants. He even admitted it in a, in a phone call that was taped and, and leaked. German doctors luckily saved him. But then Putin had Navalny jailed in a Siberian cell and now he's died of a heart attack, says uh, Putin's government. But Navalny's widow, Yulia, says he was poisoned yet again. Joining me is General Jack Keane, a retired four-star general who serves as Vice Chief of Staff of the United States Army. He's now Chairman of the Institute for the Study of War. General Keane, great to catch up with you. If Putin did have Navalny murdered, the question is, what does that tell us about how Putin's feeling uh, and, and how his regime is travelling. This is what Navalny himself said it would mean in a film recently shot of him. Не надо, нельзя сдаваться. Если это произошло, это означает, что мы необыкновенно сильны в этот момент, раз они решили меня убить. So what, uh, General, do you think the death means? Yeah, well, I think what's happening here is Putin systematically has removed his opposition. And he knew Novani uh, certainly had a, a significant following, particularly uh, in social media. Um, but Putin, what it demonstrates to me is his paranoia and insecurity that Putin really has. You know, he's going, he's in power 24 years. He's going to get another six years in March as a result of a fraudulent election. But he still doesn't want any opposition at all. And what is the reason for that? Like other dictators, particularly President Xi, uh, the mullahs uh, in Iran, he fears his own people. And he doesn't want anything that will galvanize them in, in opposition to himself. So he goes way out of his way to ensure that doesn't happen. Even though it was very unlikely to happen uh, because of how much Putin is controlling, one, a fraudulent election, and two, not permitting protests of any consequence, since he has organized over 100,000 of the National Guard to stop protests immediately when they begin. And by the way, so our audience understands, this past week they have been arresting people simply for putting flowers in certain places in honor of Novani and they've been whisked off to jail by his thugs. They don't want anything to start like he saw in 2011, fraudulent election, hundreds of thousands of people in the street demonstrating against him. He learned that lesson, and that is why he so systematically eliminates his opposition, but also makes certain that the people are not in a position to demonstrate in any consequential manner whatsoever. And it's the other reason why he feeds them state propaganda 24-7. And by and large, the German people, I mean, excuse me, the Russian people are still supporting Putin, despite challenges he's had with the war, despite the economy that's in the tank, and despite the fact that, Andrew, just recently he's gone to a war f footing economy and he's spending 9% of his GDP on defense at the expense of the Russian people. They're putting up with all of that, sadly to say. I know, I was hoping, you know, well, I see that Joe Biden, the president, is uh, putting on extra sanctions on Russia after the death of Navalny, but 
I don't know what more sanctions will do than the ones uh, so far uh, haven't done already. So he seems to be getting away with it, General. It is a, a, it's a real indictment of the Russian culture, I've got to say, uh, the Russian society that uh, he does. Uh, meanwhile, uh, President Biden is also getting his Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, to talk to India and to China about new weapons. Russia is said to be developing nuclear weapons now in space. Now, how serious are these weapons and what do you think Biden wants China to do about it? Yeah, well, I've had some pretty good sources on this. And yes, Russia is developing a nuclear capability to put it in space to blind the satellites if they set that that bomb off. So our audience understands in the early 1960s, the United States first and Russia second, both detonated nuclear weapons in space just to see and understand what the impact would be detonating something in low orbit as opposed to on Earth. As a result of that, they joined a treaty together almost immediately following that in 63 and then in 67, they formalized a treaty to ban using nuclear weapons in space. Here's what I think Russia is really up to. Number one, they have the capability, but they haven't deployed it in space. I think Putin wants this as leverage, leverage to use to curb U.S. behavior, leverage to use uh, in negotiations. And, and why do I say that? Because it's already been successful for them. They have been brandishing the use of tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine for two years. That has forced the Biden administration to fear that escalation, and it, it forced them not to give the Ukraine the weapons that they wanted, advanced weapons, in sufficient quantity in a timely manner. The Europeans, who finally figured it out that Putin was not serious about it, because as we escalated ourselves in advanced weapons, they did nothing about it. They pushed the tanks on America. They pushed the, the long-range missiles on America. This is the Europeans forcing the Biden administration, and they forced the F-16s. I believe Putin knows he has that, the threat of deploying that weapon even, that he has leverage, and I think he will use it. The United States will likely not deploy a nuclear weapon into space that would blind our own satellites, not just Russian or Chinese satellites, and the satellites of our allies. It's not something the United States is going to take on. And Russia certainly knows full well that if they detonated that nuclear weapon that they deployed, that would impact China and blind them as well as their other allies. And believe me, the reason why they're talking to China and India is for that reason. China, who has advanced capabilities beyond the United States in space, we have led with space exploration to be sure China wants to do a lot of that themselves. But in terms of satellites, hypersonic glide vis uh, vehicles and other devices and very close to weaponizing space, China doesn't want any part of Russia deploying a nuclear weapon in space are certainly detonating something uh, like that. So, yes, we should be talking to China about it. I think China gets it themselves w without us actually talking to them about it. Well, that's fascinating. That's the first sign of a potential split in China's support for Russia that we've seen, or a serious one. So, well, um, your analysis, um, very much hoping that is, that is correct. Sounds right. Hope it's right. Jack Keane, General Jack Keane, thank you so much indeed for your time. Yeah, always good talking to you, Andrew. Thank you.